Hi. So I've been reading comments and Guardian of Lucidity recently been talking under the video I made as regards how do people get incubus and succubus into their space. So the comment is, thank you for this very well delivered video. By far, you have the best explanation that I've come across. Where there are more people like in the world. Thank you. Now, continuing on, I just have one question for you, please. How can you tell the difference between a regular sexual dream with a dream crack characters versus one with a succubus and incubus? The clues I have gotten are seeing them through the third eye during the in-between state of half asleep, half awake, if not God here. They're the ones pursuing the intercourse in the rush. The visuals don't match the sense of touch and weird, creepy vibes and authentic like they're, whole, like they're hiding something. And also, if you have experience with the lucid dreaming, how do I stop myself from raping women in my dreams? Okay, there's two things. If you have ever had sexual dreams or the encounter with succubus and incubus, please share your experience because everyone's different. They will have different encounters and all. So if you have some of it, share your experience in the comments and maybe someone will get to see it as a helpful thing. But let's go back to this whole thing. How do you tell the difference between a sexual regular dream with dream characters versus the one with succubus and incubus? Basically, a lot of sexual dreams and, you know, dreaming can go in like various states of just a dream, lucid dream, like super aware and visuals and like perception and it's like all vivid and clear. There's also astral traveling, astral projection, kind of same thing, consciousness shifting, out of body experience. And it's all in one cluster, so to speak, where you can get like, oh my God, it's real as can be. So that can go to that state. But how would you tell the difference between those and the real experience with incubus and succubus. People who are into science say that we get into this realm of rapid eye movement sleep, and basically for 90 minutes or like you know, like with the whole cycle, we get this sleep paralysis where the physical body is asleep, but your mind is awake, and you will start seeing hallucinating stuff and we'll experience all that. Great, that's what they say. But I have had a chance to work with people who have real encounters with those beings like this and succubus and incubus so how the hell would they like tell them like what the hell is going on the only thing like personally i haven't experienced those but i worked with those that are dealing with such issues and it's nothing just like oh there's a creature sitting on my chest it's not just that like yeah okay sleep paralysis you can get that hallucination that oh my god is there it's creepy as hell you feel a sensation and then you wake up and oh, okay that was weird. Damn, I'm scared the hell out of me. And that's kind of heavy. Yeah, that's, that's cool. It can be sleep paralysis. It can, it can be the real encounter. But the difference between sexual dream and the succubus and incubus encounter is that if you have incubus and succubus, it's not usually just one-time fun thing. These beings are after your sexual energy, of course. That's a given. But they don't visit you just at night. It's not like, oh, honey, we're going to wait for you to fall asleep and then we're going to rape you and then we're going to leave you. Bye-bye. It doesn't work like that. They're more into that 24-7. So literally, if you do get an incubus and succubus, and of course, everyone's individual. It's not always the case with everyone else. So there might be some differences. But the most common thing I have noticed among people that I have worked with that have had issues with incubus and succubus is that encounters didn't stop at night. It happened during the day where people might be sitting here on a chair doing their day-to-day -day things. They're, they can be in their office at work or something else, and they will literally feel someone touching them. It's not a dream anymore. It's not just a, oh, wow, that was so real. It was like visuals, and I just woke up and, damn, like that was awesome. Or not. Or that might have been creepy. But you wake up, and encounters continue throughout the day while you're fully wide awake and there are no chemicals in your space, nothing in your diet that will affect and cause hallucinations because all of a sudden it's a real freaking sensation. And you literally feel like someone, and for those that are sensitive, like for the sexual conduct, it's like, hey, literally someone's touching you and not where you would like. If you're straight and someone's going down the hole where there's no sunshine, then you're like, what the hell? Like, that feels creepy. Come on. And there's no one around you. Physically, no one's around you. You're just sitting there. And you have washed up and you have taken care of yourself. And you're into very hygienic like, place. Or, you know, like, really, like, hey, I'm into hygiene. And why the hell do I feel someone going up there? Like, what the fuck? I have worked with people 
that wake up after a night and literally they have scars or they have marks of someone grabbing them, holding them down. They're literally fluids and other things. And they can have cameras and no one's been there physically at night. I said, like, no one walked in and did the thing and then left. But, hey, what the fuck's under the blanket? What the hell is going on? So, like, a lot of those things happen. So, for me, going to that, how can you tell that it's a regular sexual dream versus the incubus and succubus? Sexual dreams usually will be easier to let go of. It happens in, let's say, dreams are very... I don't know, like, general term, because we still don't understand it fully, and neither do I. It's just my perception and, like, like the opinion on it, and it's subjective. But basically, it can be another reality. It can be, like, parallel reality. It can be another dimension. It can be tons of, like, different lives, different aspects, so, or you're dreaming, or you're just connecting to some other things. But let's say your physical body falls asleep and you have the sexual experience. And it can be visual, like super vivid. It can be, you can have all the sounds and sensations and you wake up like, wow, that was real. And after you're done, it's it's done. Like I said, you wake up and the whole experience, you're able to let it go. I said, your physical body feels fine. You might have a nice wet dream, but that's where it stops. You don't feel super exhausted, like you were doing something all night long. You don't feel weird. And so with the sexual dreams, it's going to be real as can be or other kinds of dreams but the experience is like as real as can be like you live that life like you know those people like you have experiences with them and you wake up like oh but you're able to let it go it's out of your space after one hour two hours you're still not hanging on to it and that's fine and your body doesn't feel too exhausted so i would go like that is more of a sexual dream or you've been in other like let's say parallel realities or have had like actual travel out of body experience or other possibilities so it's not just the dream. It might be more, maybe not. Who knows? But when it's incubus and succubus, all of a sudden, it doesn't stop with you waking up and you felt like someone was on your chest. You have exhaustion. All of a sudden, your sex drive and your like, yeah, your sex drive goes down. As in, like, you're being used. You're no longer, hey, it's fun and I can do it again. You're like, God damn, not again. It's getting exhausted. All of a sudden, you can't take it anymore. You want to take a break. You want to have some time for yourself to think straight, maybe to have more energy. And boom, you're being used. You're no longer the tool. Now you're just a little used thing. So that's one part. Another thing, those beings, if you have incubus and succubus, they don't really let you go after one night stand. It doesn't work like that. They usually stick around. And throughout the day, you might experience that certain people either push you away or they start acting differently around you. Like you might have been friends and all of a sudden they can't come close to you. They don't want to be around you. All of a sudden things you say or do or don't stay and do will aggravate them. But that's because if there's an incubus and succubus, they usually own you they think that they own you now you are their toy you are their place to go to have fun and get the energy and basically you know you're like a battery so they're just going to drain you as much as possible and power themselves up but in a way like hey it's a pleasure that's how they live so to speak but one of possibilities of how it all works and with all that incubus and succubus will start affecting people around you not just you people around you any possible friendship that you have can be affected like it's not necessarily the words you exchange or the actions you exchange but just the energy you don't have to do anything and all of a sudden people around you start getting pissed off they don't like you anymore they kind of feel differently about you but it's not you it's the incubus or succubus saying hey this being is mine you can't have it or they try to give this perception where no one can use you if you could possibly have a one night stand or have a relationship all of a sudden it's like someone's getting in the way their energy might be getting in the way. Your lifestyle, your focus, your wording can actually get those beings like as an incubus and succubus out of your space. So that other person near in your life might be a threat to the creature. And so they're going to try to keep you all for themselves and push anyone away from you, which is why it's not just a dream anymore. When these beings enter your space, they start using you. They try to like, start taking your energy. They start using you sexually. So 
you know, like you might have way more orgasms than usual, but at the same time, you're not trying anymore and you're exhausted and you don't want it to happen. Like, man, I just want one day, one day to stop, maybe for one hour. Like for some guys or girls, it might feel like, hey, this is like awesome. Isn't that amazing? That's what I want. It's just a sexual pleasure. Great. But it's no longer sexual romantic exchange. It's no longer, wow, that was a pleasure. You're being used like a used condom, so to speak. And I'm just being blunt as can be. But people I know that, or people that I have worked with that have had dealt with incubus and succubus, you know, first time I'd be like, hey, it's a pleasurable thing. They didn't have anyone there physically for a while. And someone finally was able to please them. And they felt great. But then second day comes, third day comes, and it starts becoming an issue because they no longer have control over it. And now this being incubus and succubus, they start really overtaking things. It's, it's, it's like using you, taking up all your energy, your space. You don't feel like yourself anymore. You start getting exhausted and it's too much and it's overwhelming. And like, oh, you just want to get some rest. You want to sleep, but you wake up all exhausted. So that's like when you start getting incubus and succubus into your space. People around you change and all this stuff. But like there are various signs. And those of you that have encountered incubus and succubus or have had sexual dreams, you can share in the comments what kind of difference do you think is there? And another thing I want I want to throw it out there, some people can have sexual dreams and astral traveling and out-of-body experiences or their pocket reality or other kind of things where you're not inviting a being into your space, but you create with your imagination a place where you can have fun. And over there, when you do that, you can have all the sensations, you can have all your sexual pleasure, you can sort of like get every possible sexual scenario and fantasy you want and you live it like harem or whatever is your kink you can get all that pleased but you will feel fine you will not wake up and feel oh my god i can't take it anymore i just wanted to stop like no you literally had rest and you've had a great experience and that was fun and it was sensual and it was pleasing but those is like when you create it, when you were the boss when you have control over it when incubus and succubus enters your space it's usually they start taking control over you not like they can control your life, but they can affect people or how you feel. And with that, like there's there's sort of like a slight difference. And the worst part is that it doesn't stop at night. You wake up and those beings will cling to you throughout the day. They might touch you, they might feel around, and pe people will literally feel like like damn, like I'm literally being touched right now, and I hate it. They can't handle it. So it's a huge thing. So that's how I would tell the difference. 